Hey family, how are you doing? This is your brother Vine Mayor Deese, man. Peace to you, peace to your home, peace to your family, peace to your community, peace to your ancestry, peace to my community, uh, peace to my ancestry, and peace to the nation that you, I, and them are creating. Peace also to the Gothic forces, um, to the Great Spirit above, to the Mother below. Um, I wanted to talk to you very, very quickly about something that um, I'm passionate about, actually, and I'm it's something that I, I think we as black people, we as black beings, because I really don't like saying people because we're not people, we are beings, we are black beings, and there is a difference. There are different um, instruments, or excuse me, organs, we could call them organs of the being. The soul is just one. And um, if you don't look at yourself as a whole being, um, that's where the concept of individuality in African uh, language actually comes from because you want to be in inner divisible you don't want the dividedness um, internally you want to be a whole being um, and so you can be your true self in Western civilization they actually seek to fragment the in inner divisible person the one that is not divided they seek to create division so then they can exploit you and they can um manipulate you um this actually is perfect the ancestors are definitely working well tonight because um i wanted to talk to you about possession and evil now this is something that we as black folks we don't we we don't understand evil we really don't understand evil anymore we used to i think understand um evil or at least we had a conception of evil which was much broader than what we have today we used to talk about um, and I know this because um, I used to hear the old folks talk about stuff like this, about possession, about spiritual manipulation of a cognitive um, aspect of a person or an emotional aspect of a person. And I used to hear people talk about throwing those spirits out, getting those spirits out, getting those spirits away, doing things to ensure that the spirit can't come back. And this is not something that we talk about. I bet you most of you are thinking right now, what is this guy talking about? He sounds crazy. Really? Do I? We watch movies about possession. We watch movies about the devil coming back. We watch movies about demons being loose on earth. We watch movies about magical powers that can defeat demons and devils and evil spirits. We watch movies about these things. And yet, you think those movies don't have any correlation with reality. Of course, the logical mind says, well, they're movies. Of course, they don't have um, any relationship to reality. That's why they're movies. There is a long history, a long history. And I'm not talking about a few cases either of possession and of people actually having to do battle with evil spirits. There's a long history of this. We as black people, we don't have a lot of reference to it anymore. We talk about these things. We'll, you know, people go to church and they'll, they'll talk about principalities and the devil and, you know, demonic spirits and things like that. But most pastors have no clue what evil really, really ultimately is. They'll see it sometimes. They will. Actually, I think a lot of pastors see it. And they say a few words, you know, and it goes away. But they aren't aware of the systemic aspect of evil. And I mean that. And how evil works correspondingly with elements that we don't see, that are bigger. You know, it's evil is organized much like good. It has a force that is apparent on this realm, and then a force that is not apparent, which is behind the scenes, trying to defeat good. And we have no true uh, concept of that. We don't even think about that anymore. And we don't talk about it anymore. And this is to our detriment, because much of the things, many of the things that we consider cultural stakes, in our lives in this Western culture. Many of the things we look at as cultural stakes, these these in, these pillars that make up the foundation of our cultures, 
I see them as purely evil and demonic. And I don't see them as that way because um, I'm a traditionalist or anything like that. I see them as demonic because I watch people and I can see how they are being manipulated and motivated and pushed and moved in a manner that is not only unhealthy, but unnatural. You can look into the eyes and see the soul. Always remember that. You can look into the eyes and see the soul. Most of us, because we are African at heart, and I was reading a book on um, um, the cultural roots of black children, and in the book, the author states that we do things unconsciously that are linked to Africa that we don't even realize are linked to Africa. One of those such things is when we respect somebody, we don't look them in the eye. Now, that's cool if you know the person. But in this world, in this organization of uh, Western civilization, you need to look a person in the eye. You need to look them in the eye and you need to look them in the face because you could be talking to a demon and not even realize it. You could be talking to a demon and not even realize it. And there's a lot of them. Now, we don't talk about that. We don't talk about the fact that um, the demonic presence is getting bigger and larger. Uh, you know, and when we do talk about those things, we will say something like, oh, well, the Bible said in the last days, yada, 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 fool. You've been in the last days for the last 5,000 years. What makes you think anything of significance is going to end these last days in the next few months or years? You have been in the last days for the last 5,000 years because you've been under attack at least for the last 5,000 years. And yet we are still acting as this as if this is normal. Now, it is tradition in African culture to actually approach the idea of of ridding the community of evil spirits. And this is something that we are going to have to become familiar with again, because we have a lot of exorcisms to actually perform. And if we don't perform them, things in our community is only going to get worse. Part of the exorcism is going to mean that we're going to have to redefine what church is. We are going to have to realign what church is connected to and re orientate that energy reorientate that energy now if we're not going to do this i don't think we're going to be able to save many of our communities because there is so much evil working so much evil working that if we don't have a cleansing of some sort it is going to overrun us now again all of this seems crazy all of this seems crazy but i i beg you do the research do the research. Heck, even if you don't want to look at Africa, because, you know, some people still are caught up with the whole African idea and Africans don't really know nothing. And, you know, dark skinned people are stupid. They are too superstitious. They know nothing. OK, that's fine. Do your research from the European standpoint. And what you'll find is there is a long history in Europe of the idea of possession, of the idea of um, of a. Uh, uh, of, of either working with evil spirits or dis or trying to destroy evil spirits. If you don't want to take it from the African perspective, go to the European, but you will find it. You will find it. Now, there is um, something interesting in this because, you know, when, when evil becomes too brass and it becomes too overloaded, then you tend to get a wiping of some sort. So that evil is broken down and the structures that enabled it are broken up. That is what happened in World War II. You would have thought that evil would have been really suffocated after World War One, But World War Two was a means of really showing Europe that, no, you can't do this again. And I'm getting fearful that the United States is in and of itself heading for such a such a um, an ending because. Um, um, the evil that is so prevalent throughout this land uh, is it's in a way turning against itself in a way that is turning toxic. Um, and what I mean by turning against itself, it's not that it's fighting itself. It is that 
through the wisdom of the Most High. The Most High has given it far too many vessels to occupy. And <clears throat> it almost is as if by getting what it wanted, which was to be able to occupy so many melanated people um, and still have free range of many of the Europeans that it had conquered, um, almost by getting what it wanted, it's exhausting itself. And so it has to create more and more turmoil because now that the whole world seems to be its oyster, the turmoil which it feeds on is disappearing because the world is relaxing into the state of perpetual chaoticness. And it is actually suffocating. It is dying because it's not getting its influx of, of human debris, which it feeds off of. And so it is likely that evil will call for a major cataclysm, war, which will result in hundreds of millions of deaths, maybe a billion or more, just so it can have one final feast. And if, of course, it could, you know, bring the whole world down and possibly have access granted, which it won't, but, you know, it, evil doesn't think like that. Um, but maybe have access granted to the higher realms, it's all for that. But it is actually in turmoil, in trouble, because it can't feed and feast on the human um, excrement. You know, that happens when 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 lives become intertangled and, and kind of flame out. Um, it doesn't have that. And it's 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 being it's becoming sick. So that's what I mean when I say it's turning in on itself. And so, um, as I've mentioned before, there's going to be a great day of awakening coming. And it knows it. It's, you know, doing what it can to stave that off. But we need to do what we can to um, <clears throat> excuse me, to um, uh, rescue ourselves from it. Now, where this all comes from, I was watching a video. Um, Amos Wilson actually was talking a lot about possession um, prior to his death. And I was watching this incredible um, piece of artistic work by this brother. And I wish I had his um, his YouTube name, but I don't at this moment. But I'm going to put a link in for this. Um, the video is called Dr. Amos Wilson. Slavery was back there. And he makes the statement that we are a possessed people. Um, I'm sorry, I'm moving things around on my computer. Uh, but he has talked about the European possessive spirit, and these are all things that we need to be um, we need to be cognizant of because these things are really ravaging our lives, and we need to admit that, and we need to make the appropriate action or take the appropriate action to rid ourselves of them. All right. Um, questions, comments, concerns, post them below. I look forward to hearing from you guys. All right. Peace and love to you.